What's going on guys? Will again with Gutter Fighting Secrets. So today we're gonna be messing around with some elbow stuff. I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I learned doing Muay Thai and you know, even before that, I've always felt very comfortable with elbows and kind of medium range close in fighting. And that's kind of where we thrive here in you know modern gutter fighting. So the first warm up drill that I like to do solo on the heavy bag, and by the way, I think it's really important that we get good at getting good at training solo on a heavy bag because I know a lot of you guys don't have partners some of you guys even live like all the way out on farms and stuff in rural America salt of the earth Johnny Appleseed Minuteman type guys so I think it's really important that we do kind of more of these solo training drills actually than than we do with partners because a lot of us don't have another guy that's also just insane and wants to fight all the time the first technique or the first drill that I like to always warm up with is a very simple one. I'm just going to be covering my temples, right? And I'm going to use an open hand. Uh, one of the reasons I use an open hand is because if I put a fist up here, like that definitely works, but this just works a little bit better. Not to mention the fact that if I need to, I can grab, I can grab behind the neck on like a tie clench, or I can even grab a piece of clothing. I mean, this definitely, definitely works but I just feel like this is even adding a little bit more protection on my face, right? It's covering my jaw. If you see this elbow here, it can, I can do like, a, I don't know what you call this. I can bend into it and I can start to cover up these ribs right here, right? So I really like an open hand and just covering my temple. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand real nice and close to the heavy bag. Again, we like the close in fighting here at Modern Gutter Fighting and I'm gonna cover this. The other hand, I'm just gonna throw an elbow, all right? Now, a little bit of an intricacy that I like to work with with the elbow is there's a couple of ways we can throw these, right? So we can throw it just like this and we can kind of graze it on the bag, right? This is more of a cut. This is more of a cutting type strike, right? So in, in Muay Thai, like when you throw an elbow, a lot of what you're trying to do is cut the guy. Um, yeah, it's, it's good for knocking him out, but a lot of the times when you see Muay Thai fighters use this stuff, they're gonna throw it like this, keep their hand open, and just try to graze it along the guy to cut him. And it, it helps to end the fight. And it's kind of one of those things that's like more of a, I'm talking here. It's kind of one of those, more of those things that's like a competition-based thing, but in the street, cutting the guy works just fine as well. Like, obviously you cut him in the forehead and he's bleeding down into his eye, you know? It's definitely a psychological advantage for you and maybe you can take away a little bit of his vision too. So what I like to do is I come here and I just practice grazing and it warms up my shoulders too. You know, I'm not an old guy, but I'm not a 21 year old either. So I do like to warm up my shoulders before I really start getting into these elbows because it can have the tendency to like make it sore. <laughs> so I'll take it here and I'll just graze it and I'll keep my palm facing the bag so it gives me a little bit more fluidity and extension. And I'll come here and I'll graze it. And then what I'm gonna do here, you notice how my body is kind of angled off this way? Well, now I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna replace this hand with this hand. And it's basically like I'm combing my hair and I'm just gonna cover up here, right? So the theory is that he's gonna throw something back, right? So I come, I hit him, I come here and I'm expecting him to either throw like a straight punch at me or you know, maybe an elbow of his own, or if he's really good, you know, maybe he'll throw a, a hook down into here. So I don't want to give him too much time to, you know, and be too exposed. So one, and I come in and I replace, but you notice what I do here is you can see me shrugging into it. I'm shrugging into him. Now guys, I'm not staying here for too long. So check this out. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And this is just a warm-up drill. It's not meant for anything really more than warming up and kind of getting used to covering up while you strike and then replacing that with the other hand while you strike. It's cover drill combined with kind of an elbow, elbow drill. So one, we cut him good. We come back here. We're expecting to get hit. Let me come back again. We cover up, expecting to get hit. And we're just doing that. And again, we're not going too hard on the bag. We're not grabbing it. Ah! trying to like kill the bag right we're warming up our shoulders a rotator cuff all of that stuff and we're just getting used to flowing with it like that so let's take a look at another elbow drill that we can kind of start warming up with so another warm-up drill is that I like to use is the upward elbow strike you notice here when I did that it's up 
and I'm covering myself as well because if we are throwing an elbow into him, right? The chances of us actually like knocking someone out to the point where they don't fight back with this, it's it's not great. I mean, even if even if it's like a 40 or 50 percent chance, which is pretty high in a fight, um, we still want to always make sure that we're protecting ourselves as we strike. And we're definitely assuming that he's going to do something back to us <laughs> once we've attempted to uppercut him with an elbow. Now, when we are utilizing this uppercut elbow, generally what it's going to be is into a couple different areas. It could be into the sternum or it could be into the chin, like an uppercut, right? Like a boxing uppercut. Um, but this is just an elbow uppercut. And we're aiming either for the bottom of the chin there or the jawline, or it could be for the sternum as well. So what I like to do is I'll do basically the same type of concept. I'm coming in, I'm uppercutting, and you notice here my hands are both protecting myself. I'm uppercutting and then I'm just gonna replace it with this one, right? One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And again, it's not necessarily like a combative process. It, it's, it's, it's just a drill to get warmed up. So we sum here, one, two, one, two, one, two, and then we come here. One, two, one, two, one, two, two. And if you notice, if you guys, <coughs> excuse me, have done any boxing before too, what is this like? Like it's like slipping almost, right? And we can come and do that. And there's some cool stuff that we can do. Like if we get, if you got some paracord or whatever, you can stretch it out and you can do that. And that's really good to warm up as well. I don't have any paracord out here with me but we can do a separate video on like slipping drills and I'm all about that. Movement is is key, as I'm sure you guys know, in, you know, in any fight, whether it's striking, grappling, or trapping. So we come here, we just get warmed up, we get loose. Then we come here, we get loose. And now notice guys how I'm tucking my chin on that. Um, I always want to keep my chin tucked because <laughs> I don't want to get knocked out. I'm expecting him again to throw something to be good enough to throw something at me. I never ever go into a fight underestimating. That's something I learned early on when it, you know, either it was Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu, MMA in general, um, doing a lot of sparring. You meet someone and you think, oh, you know, this guy's going to be an easy fight. And it turns out that he was a, a D1 wrestler, you know, and he's just wearing a white belt, right? Or it turns out that, you know, he's been, uh, a boxer for 10 years and he's new to Muay Thai, right? So you get the point. It's always important to, to really be diligent and cautious that you're protecting yourself at all times and treating every single opponent that you come across like they can definitely kick your ass and you have to fight with all your might to, you know, to win that for to come to prevail. I don't even like to use the word winning because a lot of the times in street fights, it's like not about winning or losing, but about surviving. So those are the, the two warm-ups that I like to start with, and we're we'll gonna look at one more, and then I'll, uh, I'll take the hoodie off and we can actually start to get to work. So I mentioned about taking the hoodie off. Now, I just, wanna, I just wanna tell you guys this real quick and show you guys this, is that I like to warm up, especially when I'm doing the elbow stuff, with a hoodie if the weather permits. Like, I live out in the middle of the desert, and all of a sudden, about two days ago, it, the AC got turned on. Like, it's, it's not cold by any means, but it's not warm either. I'm used to like, you know the lows being in the 90 mid 90s and now all of a sudden you know it's 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 in the 60s and high you know low 70s so i always it's important to me to like protect myself enough i warm up with a hoodie on so everything stays nice and fresh and warm in here and everything gets you know ready to go and then once i start heavy striking i put the i take the hoodie off again weather permitting um and i go from there so i, I think that's a good idea i learned it from weightlifting my coach would always have me uh do warm-ups like with a little bit of an extra layer on and he, he thought that helped and it always has helped me prevent um you know sprains and all that stuff while i was lifting and then i i use it for uh striking now as well you know the the more i get into it uh, the more i have to protect myself so um this one is going to be a medium like a medium strength medium speed right so we've warmed up we got loose now we're going to go a little bit harder but not hard at all, right? So what I mean by that is like when I'm using these elbows, I'm gonna be touching and I'm gonna be following through, but I'm not gonna be like winding up and trying to go all the way through it. I'm simply gonna be going at a medium speed and that that's gonna be kind of the last warm up drill that I do. Um, 
before I get to work. Now, one more caveat here to the warming up thing. I mean, if you do like three, two, three, five minutes of jump rope or whatever it is before you get going, that's a, always a great idea. You can never go wrong with that. But if you don't, warming up lightly with a hoodie can also be a good option. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna assume that I've tried to throw this elbow and I've missed, because it happens, right? What do you do? I mean, do you, do you then just square up with him? No, because you're gonna get rocked in the face or you're gonna get a knee thrown into you or something like that, right? So anytime that you miss with an elbow strike, if you try to square up, well, that's like, that's like a good second of time and space for him to go and strike at you. And again, we're assuming these guys that we're fighting know how to fight. So um, instead of that, when I miss, I'm just gonna utilize uh, what my Muay Thai instructor Consox or Floyd used to refer to as the spine fish. I don't know, maybe there's another name for it, but it's just kind of a straight back elbow. Um, I know in the military CQC, you'll see this a lot, right? You'll see this, you'll see this. But this is more of, a, of an elbow uh, coming from the front, but it's also utilizing that back meat, meaty portion of your elbow uh, and also the kind of the, the tip of the elbow here. So I'm assuming that for whatever reason I've missed and now, oh shit, I definitely don't wanna like square up. I simply wanna get him with the elbow here. So again, I've missed with the elbow and instead of trying to like slip or, or come in and square up again, I'm just going to get him in the, you know, I'm either aiming for the, the chin or the jaw or the nose, bridge of the nose or whatever, but I don't wanna waste time. I've missed and let me get him here. Now, after we come here, we deliver this strike, then we can absolutely start to move. So one, two, and we can square up again, but we're distracting him enough. We're giving him something to think about. We're putting him on the defense. You know, anytime that he gets hit, um, even though touched lightly, it gives him that split second of having to worry about defense and not worry about offense. So the drill's gonna look like this. One, two, we cover, all right, we come back. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, one, two. Now, if you notice here, all right, not only am I covering, but I also have a great opportunity after I deliver this to go into, you know, on the last video I did, I called this an O'Neill shield, right? Um, it's not, it's kind of a faux O'Neill shield, if you would call it, right? I actually went back after I did that video and I looked at uh, Tommy's YouTube channel, Tommy from Barutsu Labs. He's kind of one of my go-to guys on the historic gutter fighting stuff and I looked up what he was talking about with the O'Neill shield and it's actually more like this right something like that um I had another guy comment on that video saying well actually this is more of a 52 blocks type skull and crossbones I think they call it type thing yeah yeah you're absolutely right it, it is and it's also like an old school boxing it, it's been around for a while but whatever you want to call it um it works so if we even just come in here, right? We can then start to cover up that way. Freaking noise. I'm trying to work on getting my microphone back up and running and cut back on this background noise. But until then, we'll have to deal with the traffic. So I come here, I get it, and then I can come into my, let's just call it a skull and crossbones <clears throat> and, um, and angle off there. Now, instead, if I were to come here, I get him and I just angle off like this, well, you see the you see the problem there. He's probably definitely gonna come over the top and you know knock me in the head a few times or whatever, or you know whatever. We'll just we'll just assume we're talking about striking here. So I miss. I come here. I want to keep the momentum going, but I also want to protect myself. So I'm gonna come in here and keep nice and tight, nice and firm, and angle off. Now another thing that I'd worry about here is my rib cage being exposed, right? So I come here. I miss, I'm angling here. While I'm worried about here and what his limb could do up here, um, I'm also gonna be worried about him throwing a hook down into my rib cage, right? So I do wanna angle and blade off as quickly as possible. One, two, and I come here, right? I miss here, I'm temporarily in this nice skull and crossbones. 
but then I come here and notice where my elbow goes, it goes to protect my rib cage. Cause I am very concerned, like I said, about being exposed too much and exposing here, right? You've got the vitals here and here. And I don't want that to happen. So one and an angle up. One, two, and an angle up. One, two, and an angle up. So that could actually be two different drills here. We could do, I miss, I come, or I miss here, I miss here, I miss here, 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 here. And then we could go right into from that, Get the point right miss and pump and angle up miss and pump and then angle up well, actually i should probably angle off that way but you get the point so those are a couple of different warm-up drills that we can start with now let's start looking at uh, i'm getting hot here so now let's start looking at some good uh you know more full speed elbow drills that we can get into.